On the fifth day of October, Halloween gave to me five naked witches, four alien spelunking, three UFO abductions, two deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween. I am your your host and faithful companion, Bo, on our journey through 31 movies uh, that I think are good or haven't seen or haven't seen in a while. And anyway, it's just a big excuse to talk about a bunch of horror movies and as is Halloween, right? Like that's one of the best things about the holiday is all, all of us broken people that love horror movies so much, this is the one time of year that we can talk to normies about horror movies because they're all over the place. And, you know, we get to show them on people foist our favorite movies on others. And it, in the past three years, including this one, I've done these 31 movies because it gives me a chance in some cases to reevaluate a movie that... I saw one time or I saw a couple of times, but it's been a while and I want to go back and kind of revisit it and see how I feel about it and et cetera, et cetera. And we've been doing this run of Blumhouse movies and you'll forget how many movies that Jason Blum produced. And one of them that seems maybe out of uh, step with the others is the movie we're talking about today, which is the Lords of Salem, the Rob Zombie movie. And I know it's a divisive movie. And we'll get into all that. But let me just say from the outset, I try to give Rob Zombie the benefit of the doubt. Because I actually think he's a pretty good director. I don't think he's a great writer. And I think that's the biggest problem with his movies is that he has a very particular sensibility. And he, he sort of inserts that into all of his films. And in a lot of ways, he's much more of... Uh, a, he's Tarantino-esque. In the sense that he's basically grabbing a bunch of uh, scenes and, and motifs from other horror movies and kind of cramming them all together. Like, How the House of a Thousand Corpses is very, uh, you know, the Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, and very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, you know, The Devil's Rejects gets closer to kind of a, an original idea. But there's a lot of peck and paw in Devil's Rejects as well. So... You know, it's not as if he is wholly removed from the source material or, or tries to disguise that. And I think Lords of Salem is another one where he wears his influences on his sleeve. But unlike the more aggressive, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or, uh, you know, when he goes back to do Halloween, uh, his version of that, uh, then you get a much different kind of stew with Lords of Salem because it's much more about you know the tenant and uh, Rosemary's baby and you know a little bit of Alucarda and you know a, a lot of these weird European horror films uh, find their way into it there's a lot of Argento in Lords of Salem in terms of its color palette and it seems much more oriented around the visuals and creating a sense of, of, of atmosphere and tone that is different from the more rock and roll kind of sensibilities of his other movies. And I, that's one of the reasons I like it. But, I, I, you know, in my defense, continuing of Rob Zombie, I think that he has fallen on hard times. Um, I have not seen the Monsters movie. I have heard it is not great. And I think coming out of the gate, as soon as the trailer landed and everyone kind of saw what the trailer was, and it may be unfair, the movie may be nothing like the trailer, but the trailer was really off-putting. And, and so I haven't seen the Monsters yet. I, I've, the last thing I saw, I guess, that was an original work of his was 31. And 31, I thought, was really... Uh, disappointing because it both rehashes stuff that Zombie had done before and it has some of the more graphic dialogue that he's kind of known for but I'm just a little done with. Like I think it works in something like Devil's Rejects but I just don't want to keep returning to it and I think that the Halloween remake was the point where I thought 
I don't know that I have a whole lot more Rob Zombie left in me uh, as a viewer if if he's going to kind of cannibalize his own work like this, or or just make it feel all of the the same stripe. And that's, again, why I like Lords of Salem. It, it feels like a different thing. It feels like uh, a movie that exists outside his canon in a lot of ways. And if you're unfamiliar, Lords of Salem is a movie, uh, unsurprisingly, starring his wife, Sherry Moon Zombie. And the, the movie is all about uh, the uh, celebration in Salem, Mass Salem Massachusetts uh, as uh, Halloween approaches, I do believe. And uh, Heidi, uh, who is Sherry Moon Zombie's character, is uh, a recovering addict. She lives in uh, an apartment building, kind of a renovated home slash apartment building, where this creepy stuff starts to happen. Like, um, there's a door at the end of the hall uh, down from where she lives that she believes someone is moving in because she sees the door open and then suddenly close, but... The landlady assures her that, no, 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 nobody moved in. You're probably just going a little cray-cray. And uh, things really kick off when she receives a wooden box containing a single vinyl record from a band called the Lords of Salem. And they play it on the air and women across the town just get transfixed by the sound. This almost like atonal mess of a record. And uh, there's also a, not paranormal investigator, sort of a demonologist, an amateur sleuth, uh, played by Bruce Davison, who was the senator what melted in that X-Men movie. And, uh, you know, there's also, uh, through the film, uh, a suggestion that, hey, maybe there are real witches, maybe she is part of some conspiracy, a victim of some kind of conspiracy uh, of witches. And, uh, the movie, as I said, it borrows heavily from, you know, Polanski and Argento and a lot of these European di directors. It has a very European sensibility to it. It is not, um, as brash as some of his other work, uh, of zombies, other work. And it is almost all mood and atmosphere. And, and again, I think that's the reason that I kind of like this movie. It might be my favorite movie of Rob Zombie's, you know, when, when all is said and done. And I like the fact that he's wearing his influences on his sleeve here. You know, there's no attempt to disguise it. It's just, hey, I'm making kind of my, my version of these European devil slash cult slash witch movies. And the thing that... Lords of Salem gets right is that it does have this overwhelming sense of dread. You know, the, the closest I think you get to real Rob Zombie, um, not that, you know, he's, he's imitating others to the point that he loses himself or his own perspective in, in the movie. But the, the scene that probably smacks most of Rob Zombie's other films is the, the one where Sherry Moon Zombie goes into the church after she started, you know, having some some uh, weird things happen around her and to her, and uh, the priest uh, basically makes her blow him, and that's the one point in the movie where I'm like, I, I mean, I get it, I understand what we're doing here, but this is a little off-putting when the rest of the movie is such a nice study in in how you make the audience creep out without being brash and in your face and and ostentatious about the kind of movie that you're making and you know ostentatious audacious however you want to describe it but that definitely describes you know house of a thousand corpses and halloween and and devil's rejects and lords of salem when it works best is very restrained and it's all about the sound design, which is very, very good and very eerie. The music, which is also very eerie. That boom, 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 boom. It, it, that all is very good. And there's a great color palette, as I mentioned before, with some really well-executed shots. And it's lovely. It's a beautiful movie to look at. It, it does build to a climax that I think 
is really surreal and weird and interesting. I know a lot of people get to the end of this movie and their main reaction is, what in the hell was that? And that's fine. I, that's understandable. I get that. But that's why I think it's kind of art, <laughs> this movie, is that there are things about it that are very impressionistic and surreal and don't entirely explain themselves. There, There's just... Uh, you know, this nightmarish dreamlike kind of aspect to Lords of Salem that I really respond to and I think is really good. But I also completely understand people that think that it's a little, a little extra <laughs> that, that it, it is way too obtuse to be a satisfying narrative. But after having seen it two or three times now, I do find it to be satisfying. Like it, it sets up a story and it, it finishes that story and it leaves you in a place where there's this whole other story to be told, but that's fine. I, I think it's all, um, uh, you know, it, it comes for full circle enough that it, it doesn't leave me wanting more out of this particular tale. Uh, although it does beg the question of what happens after, uh, at the end of this movie. But eh, that's fine, you know. <laughs> when you're dealing with witches and curses and uh, and and you know vows of revenge from beyond the grave and that kind of thing, I'm fine with all that. Um, also, worth you know at least pointing out the number of character actors like Meg Foster and D Wallace and Bruce Davison and Ken Faree and Judy Geeson and Patricia Quinn. And uh, who else? Maria Conchita Alonso and Andrew Prime. And like some of the background characters are include like Sid Haig and Barbara Crampton. And, and like he stuffed this movie with horror royalty. And, uh, and a big shout out too to Jeff Daniel Phillips who plays Whitey. Who's, who's sort of the friend to Heidi. And he's very, very good in this. He's a really sympathetic character and a very sweet guy. And... You know, and it's funny that other characters kind of acknowledge that, like Sherry Moon Zombie does uh, in her way. But the other characters kind of swirling around her recognize her uh, as well, or recognize him as well as like, oh, th he's kind of dangerous because she actually cares about him. And he cares about her very clearly. And uh, that stuff, I think, works really well. It's just a good creepy movie. It's a, a really good... You know, turn out the lights. The wind uh, is a little chilly now that we're into the fall. Uh, you know, the the rustle of leaves uh, can be heard. And that's what makes this movie a perfect Halloween film. Is that it gets the tone right and the atmosphere right. And that's kind of all I need it to do. Because it's not a big uh, ask of a watch. It's only, you know, 90-ish minutes. So, eh, that's fine. That's fine. Or an hour 40, I guess, is, is where this movie lands. But th still, it's not, you know, this two-hour uh, uh, Herculean kind of horror film. Um, this Olympic-sized uh, bit like, you know, the uh, Halloween, at least it, in my memory, the Rob Zombie remake of Halloween is like two hours plus. That may not be the case, but that's how I remember it. Regardless... <laughs> Lords of Salem, it's the right length, it's got the right vibe, it captures this kind of ethereal sense of dread, uh, thanks to, like I said, sound design and atmosphere and all that stuff. I think it's just great. Uh, I have my problems with it. There are certain scenes that I think are a little too much or go over the top when a little restraint uh, would, would service Rob Zombie well in those moments, but I think it's a terrific movie, and I think it's really eerie and unsettling. And uh, having all these character actors, particularly Meg Foster um, and, and some of the other female actors who get naked uh, as the witches. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see the, the human body at that age, you know, not just Meg Foster's, but just human bodies in general. When you show them uh, off. It, it's like we, we've been conditioned to want to see and expect to see these models of perfection, you know, these, these gorgeous bodies, the, the body doubles used in movies that are just cast because they have the perfect human form. 
And then in a movie like this, it's like, no, no, no. Here's women of all ages, all body types. And you, you kind of see, you know, sometimes the ravages of time uh, come for us. And when they do, our bodies respond to that. And it's not like that's not the source of the horror. But there is something, I think, naturally horrific about seeing old people naked. Uh, because it is a stark reminder of like what time does to us. And, uh, and I'm, and I, again, you know, hats off to the actors in the film that decided that they were willing to show it all, uh, for this movie. And I, I think it, I think it works. I think it adds to the, the creepiness and the, the unsettling. I mean, it has almost that it follows kind of vibe of like, I don't, I can't totally nail down everything that's happening in this movie but there's an eeriness and and a, a sense of foreboding that makes it a wonderful watch uh, a really creepy watch you just have to pick your company for this one right like this isn't one for the kids we'll get to some that are maybe for the kids this one ain't for the kids so that's it that's for uh, lords of salem uh really enjoyed i hope you do too if you don't and you want to leave a little bit of feedback if you go over to legionpodcasts.com you will see the post for this and many of the other uh, 31 Days of Halloween. Um, if you click on any of those posts, it will lead you to a place where you can subscribe to Legion Podcast, uh, the, the podcast feed on the podcast catcher of your choice. It will also uh, show you links to uh, all of the social media. And uh, I am especially active on the Discord server. So if there are movies that we have talked about that you want to join in the discussion or tell me I was right or tell me I was wrong uh, or just throw in your two cents, that's cool too. Hop over the Discord server and, uh, and let us know. Um, at which I will be hanging out uh, for about another four days as you're listening to this, four or five days, and then I will be gone for a week on a uh, Halloween vacation. So, um, But until then... I will be around, so please uh, drop by, let me know your thoughts. If you are listening to this on the Legion podcast feed, uh, you can also get this and uh, many other things that I do over on the Dark Parade. So just uh, search for the Dark Parade, either on legionpodcasts.com uh, or on the podcast catcher of your choice, and uh, you'll be getting weekly episodes. In most cases, this month's going to be a little different because we're dropping something every day. Uh, with this 31 days of Halloween business. Um, but most months, it is at least one post a week, if not more, depending on the, the time I have to organize and record and edit all that stuff. So um, thanks again for listening. Uh, have yourself a very spooky October 5th, day five uh, of our journey through the 31 days of Halloween. Be good to each other. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy... <laughs> Uh, the, the spooky season as we really get into full swing here. Tomorrow we'll be continuing our look at the Blumhouse series uh, or production house with maybe my favorite Blumhouse movie by one of my favorite horror directors. So I'll leave it there and uh, bid you all a fine uh, October day. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.